Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Next Gen, Jetson 1 demonstrates rescue capability with mountain flights in Poland. Bell moves forward with X-Plane for Sprint. And Chinese satellites appear to dock for possible refueling. And I'm your host, Holland Lee. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Next Gen program, a weekly news program covering the next generation of flight, from electric power to vertical lift, uncrewed vehicles, and everything in between. Let's get into today's stories. Jetson 1 demonstrates rescue capability with mountain flights in Poland. Jetson got an unusual invite from the GOPR Polish Mountain Rescue Team. Try out a pair of their production single-seat eVTOLs in a rescue scenario. The team traveled to southern Poland with some Jetson 1s in tow, trying out a number of practice scenarios in the local mountainscape. The single-seat nature of the 1 apparently didn't cause much issue in terms of rescue ops, intended to provide rapid transport to the very first of the first responders. Under that mission profile, the Jetson is meant to ferry the first medic to the scene to initiate the very first line of medical response and stabilization. Heavier aircraft can bring up the rear and transport stabilized patients to medical facilities downslope and downtown. Or, with a handful of Jetson 1s on hand, a cost-effective response can be made to iron out even more kinks, like specialists to set up a landing area, triage patients, or maintain intensive care until extra hands can arrive. The 1 weighs about 250 pounds and folds up for easy transportation, which trickles down into easier storage around a firehouse or a station. The Polish rescue specialists were apparently impressed by the 1's performance, since it was able to handle 31 knock crosswinds. They further admired the all-electric propulsion and fairly pared-down design, since it helps to avoid the kind of maintenance one expects of larger rotary-wing aircraft. After the break, Congress confirms new FAA head. For over 30 years, the massive Sport Plane Resource Guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all-new Digital Sport Plane Resource Guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated, an even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon. www.sportplane.com Are you ready to ace your FAA drone pilot knowledge test, get your remote pilot certificate, and start earning money? Well, flying a drone is a great tool that can open up new business opportunities for anyone. Realtor, insurance adjuster, videographer, or commercial weekend drone warrior, you need to fly legally. Whether you're pursuing your initial Part 107 remote pilot certificate or you need a renewal, King Schools has a course just for you. So start learning today at kingschools.com. Welcome back. Now for some shorter stories in our next gen minute. Congress confirms new FAA head. The FAA officially welcomed Brian Bedford as its new administrator, setting the table for updating ATC infrastructure. He introduced himself to his 40,000 strong workforce, saying, quote, I'm grateful for the opportunity to join the FAA team. I have a deep respect for the important work FAA employees do to protect the safety and efficiency of our national airspace. I look forward to working with Secretary Duffy and admire his leadership and commitment to delivering this new system within the next three to four years." End quote. Space Tracking Initiative Under the Budget Crosshairs An open letter to the Trump administration was posted in the hopes of supporting one of its first-term projects on the chopping block in support of the Traffic Coordination System for Space. The system was developed by NOAA's Office of Space Commerce in the hopes of preventing future satellite collisions entering into beta testing last fall. The program is young and therefore on the chopping block in the fiscal year 2026 budget request. The Senate Appropriations Committee will mark up the Commerce Justice Science Bill with NOAA's funding this week. Australian Vertia Manufacturer Gets New CEO Australian hydrogen electric VTOL developer AMSL Aero announced a new CEO in the form of Dr. Adriano Di Pietro, putting him in charge as they move toward Vertia certification. The Vertia is one of the more utilitarian options in the country, able to run off of hybrid power and refuel from hydrogen wherever available. They've even gotten to work on the supply issue there, readying hydrogen infrastructure wherever possible. Most recently, they had registered their liquid hydrogen tanks for use in Australia. Wright Electric offers smaller, lighter start cart. 
Wright Electric has found another use for their proprietary electric motor tech, creating the Dynamo 30 kilowatt generator at the behest of the U.S. Air Force. Wright's characteristically efficient electric motor tech will one day be used for electric conversions of existing aircraft, but developers at Wright quickly found their equipment could be easily used as an aircraft start cart and went from there. The resulting dynamo generator can be used as a microgrid hub or general multi-use generator, and is apparently good enough to have a handful of pre-orders from DoD clientele already. That was our Next Gen Minute. Now back to the rest of the news. Bell moves forward with X-Plane for Sprint. Bell Helicopter has been down-selected for Phase 2 of the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency's Sprint X-Plane program. This is a positive turn of DARPA phrase that indicates Bell will move forward in the Speed and Runway Independent Technologies, or SPRINT, X-Plane program and complete their design for a demonstrator. They'll go as far as construction, ground testing, and certification of the aircraft eventually, and hopefully snag some plush contracts along the way. SPRINT hopes to end up with a stole or VTOL aircraft that can hit cruise speeds from 400 to 450 knots at relevant altitudes, while still being able to hover in austere environments from unprepared surfaces. As we've seen from previous attempts, it's a tough recipe to really nail, but as technology has advanced, it's much more achievable for a tilt rotor speed demon than it was in decades past. Bell was in Phase 1A and 1B, where they finished off the conceptual and preliminary designs for the Sprint X-Plane. But that's the easy part before all the practical engineering imposes its demands and reality rears its homely head again. Phase 2 gets into that, though, away from glossy CGI renders of fancy futuristic spacecraft and gets into actually making the kind of aircraft DARPA demands. If they nail Phase 2, then Phase 3 will see actual flight tests of the design. After these messages, Chinese satellites appear to dock for possible refueling. Welcome back. Chinese satellites appear to dock for possible refueling. China's space program took a bold step forward as two of its satellites in geosynchronous orbit appeared to dock in what might have been the country's first attempt at refueling a satellite. Multiple civilian private satellite trackers using open source telescope imaging showed the Shijian 21 and Shijian 25 satellites moving closer together and then merge into a single object. Chinese officials have not released any public information on this mission, but prior statements indicate that the Shijian-25, which launched in January 2025, is designed, quote, for the verification of satellite fuel and life extension service technologies, end quote, according to the Chinese state-owned Shanghai Academy of Spaceflight Technology, the developer of the satellite. The technologies used in space can be said to be dual-use, that is, they have both civilian and military applications. In this case, a docking maneuver could be a sign that China is developing a capability to approach, capture, and disable another country's satellite. The U.S. Space Force has also been interested in orbital refueling because military satellites often have limited fuel on board. The Space Force may run its first attempt at refueling next summer. American officials also appeared to notice the Chinese maneuver, as two of the Space Force's inspector satellites appeared to move closer to the two after the maneuver. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.